All right, we're going to get into this video in just a few seconds. But before we do that, I need to tell you about something very special that is going on on guitarplayback.com right now. This is a very limited time thing. I don't know when you're watching this video. It might be too late. But if you're watching within the first week of release, you're in luck. You need to check out the link below because my friend Robert Redman and I have combined effort to bring to you the biggest, awesomest blues bundle ever. His best courses combined with my best courses, hours and hours and hours of high quality education at a price that is ridiculous. You need to check that out. You're going to save hundreds and hundreds of dollars. At least check it out. There is something for everyone in there, some blues, uh, rhythm stuff, blues solo stuff, improvisation concepts and all that. All right, I'm done. Let's get into this video. Video, we're going to talk about five scales you may not have thought of when playing the blues. These scales are a little unconventional. They're going to sound a little different, but I'm going to show you how and when to use them. Grab your guitar. We'll get started right after this. Hi, my name is David Wallman. Welcome to this channel, which is all about helping guitar players around the world find their unique voice, develop that voice on the instrument to tell your own personal musical story. Today is all about the blues. We're going to talk about traditional blues form in A. The backing track that we're going to use, this one right here, is available for free. All you need to do is visit the link below and enter a valid email address and I'll be sending you this backing track and the five scales that we're going to take a look at right now. All right, so these scales are a little unconventional. Some of them might not sound great if you just use them uh, for your improvisation. These scales, keep in mind, should be injected into your normal phrasing. So I'm talking about all the minor pentatonic stuff that you're used to. We're in A right here. This is an A uh, blues in A major. So we have dominant seven chords. And typically what you'll be using is, well, the good old minor pentatonic scale, right? Sounds great. I want you to keep that and inject every once in a while one of the five scales that we're going to talk about right now. The first scale is the Mixo-Dorian scale. What? Well, it's simpler than you think. All right, let's talk just a little bit about um, what makes the blues what it is. One of the main components of a blues is that over a dominant seven chord, which is a, a major chord in essence, because it has a major third, you can use a minor pentatonic scale. And that's one of the only cases really when you can do that. Typically, you don't want to match musical elements that don't match. You don't want to use a minor scale over a major chord. But in the blues, that clash, that tension that you're going to hear is going to, keep, going to give the, the blues color. That's what it is. Here, typically, I should use a major scale, like a, a mixolydian, a major third. But no, a minor, minor scale. That's what sounds blues. Okay, so... I told you that because now you can understand the Mixo-Dorian scale. Mixolydian and Dorian combined together create that Mixo-Dorian scale. So what is a Mixolydian scale, mode, key, whatever you want to call it, musical alphabet? Well, it's a, it's a scale. It's a, an alphabet, like I like to say, that has a formula, that has a blueprint, and that's what knowing that blueprint allows you to use that scale over particular chords. The Mixolydian mode 
is part of the major um, collection of scales. And what I mean by major is that they have a major third. As long as you have a major third in there, it's going to be part of that major family of scales. That's the way I see it. And um, over this particular blues, we have major chords. Therefore, yes, mixolydian will probably match. And it really does match because it's a scale that also has a minor seven in there. And the dominant seven chord used in the blues is a scale with uh, minor seven, a major third and a minor seven. So mixolydian is typically the right choice for that, right? And that's, uh, if I show you a close up here, that mixolydian scale mode alphabet <laughs> is a seven note scale that has a root, a one, a major second, a major third, you knew that already, that matches that major chord, a fourth, a fifth, a major sixth, and a minor seventh. And that's, uh, if we look at these notes, those seven notes, we can extract from it one of the chords of the blues, the dominant seven chord, that is an A right here. And so I, I could play that mixolydian mode, it's gonna work great. Right, no problem there. But we also said in the intro of the video that in the blues, we can use that minor third. So if we take a mixolydian mode and change, alter that major third into a minor third, what do we have? We have the Dorian mode. It's pretty awesome. We've got just one note changes between mixolydian and Dorian, that third. All the other notes are the same. And we know that we can use over a dominant seven chord in the blues, a major third that matches and a minor third that creates that raw, uh, interesting blues sound. So if we combine both together, we have what we call the mixo Dorian mode, where we um, go from that minor third to that major third. Now, how do you use this? Well, you use it however you want, but really the strong notes, the one that matches the most is gonna be that major third. The minor third can be seen kind of a passing tone or just to add that raw flavor. So I'll play a little bit using that mixo Dorian mode. Here it is. Works great, right? That's for the Mixodorian mode. Okay, from now on, things get a little weird. We're gonna take a look at four other scales that really need to be used spor sporadically to inject a little bit of weirdness in your improv. All right, don't base your whole lead on these scales. The second scale we're looking at is the Lydian dominant scale, Lydian dominant mode, Lydian dominant alphabet, okay? So what is that? Well, it's a seven note scale that works really well over a dominant seven chord that we have here in that backing track, the A7 backing track. I, you know what? I, I lost my pick again. Here it is. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look at that Lydian dominant. What makes a Lydian dominant mode? Lydian dominant mode is a seven note scale that has uh, an A, a one. I'll show you the close up here. We got a one, a two, so far nothing weird, a three, and then we have an augmented fourth. Oh, that's interesting. And then we have um, a fifth, a sixth, and a minor seventh. So really the Lydian dominant is only one note away from the mix of Lydian, which is gonna be kind of considered the very safe scale here. So only one note defers here, that's the, the sharp four. But if you know your intervals, you know that that sharp four is sounds exactly like a diminished fifth. It's just a matter of perspective. And if you've been playing for a while, you know that the minor pentatonic scale, which shouldn't work over a dominant seven chord, but it does because of that minor third, we can transform that into a minor blues scale, which is exactly the same, but with a diminished fifth. That diminished fifth, the sound of the diminished fifth is, is very accepted in the blues. It sounds kind of like this. We're very used to that tension, right? And the tension of the minor third too. And we just said that the sound of the diminished fifth is exactly the same sound of the augmented fourth. Therefore, Lydian dominant will work awesome like that. It's kind of a mix of the mix of Lydian 
with that additional um, sound of the flat five, which is really, in this case, the sharp four. I hope you're following, but this is what it sounds like. Sounds pretty cool, right? It's a little different, but that's the sound of the Lydian dominant mode in a blues context. Okay, ready to get a little weirder with the next scale? I hope so, because we're taking a look at a symmetrical scale. Uh, you'll see why in a second. And that's the whole tone scale. That gets really weird. So it's symmetrical because you can start playing that scale from any of its note and the fingering is gonna stay the same. The whole tone scale is a scale made of whole tones, two frets all the time. So if we're in A, get our A right here, two frets higher, 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 and so forth. And the fingering that I'm gonna use here is a combination of, uh, we're gonna combine three notes and two notes. So from the low E string fifth fret, we've got three notes on frets five, seven, nine. On the next string, we're, we're not gonna do five. We're gonna go one fret higher and we're gonna play two notes on six, Eight. On the next string, we have five, seven, nine. Next string, six, eight. Next string, six, eight again. And next string, five, seven, nine. And once that pattern is memorized, you can start that pattern from any of its note. So that means that if you play that for a little while, you're gonna find some, uh, some licks that, are, that fall into the fingers really well. Uh, very easy to memorize. And that scale sounds tensed, right? So we're gonna use it as um, just, just to inject some, some weirdness in there every once in a while. But make sure that you, you, um, you know where you're going. Don't get lost. That's an easy scale to get lost. Kind of like a portal where you can, ooh, where am I? I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit. I'm gonna combine uh, the simple Mixolydian uh, scale, which is the super safe one, with that whole tone scale. And uh, let's see what happens. All right, here we go. I'll start simple, Mixolydian. Here it is. Back to Mixolydian, safe zone. Maybe a little minor pentatonic, minor blues. Here it is. And that's for the whole tone scale. Okay, if you survived that one, Scale number four and scale number five are very similar. Those are diminished scales. There are two versions of that scale. They're also somewhat symmetrical because once you learn the first you know, three notes, the first uh, three intervals, the rest just follows the same over and over and it's very easy to play. We're gonna start with the first one. The first diminished scale we're gonna take a look at is uh, an altern alternation of, alternation? Alternate, no, alternate. We're going to alternate whole tones and half tones, whole steps and half steps. So if we're in A, is going to be considered our, our first starting point. Um, from that A, sixth string, fifth fret, we're going to go two frets higher for a whole tone. After that, a half tone, so one fret. Then two frets, one fret, two frets, one fret, and so forth. Here's a fingering that works really well for this. We're going to start with that um, full tone. So uh, low E string, we've got three notes here. We've got frets five, seven, eight. Okay. Then on the next one, we're going to do five, six, eight, and one fret higher. So this is the important part. We've got this going on. So that's index, middle, pinky, and pinky higher, one fret higher. And then we repeat that pattern, not on the fifth, but on the sixth. And then on the seventh, and then on the um, ninth, and then on the tenth. Again, you can get the charts below, but that's the sound of that scale. Oops, sorry. And 
And again, that is going to add a lot of tension. So make sure that you blend that with a traditional mixolydian, minor pentatonic, minor blues, and we'll see what happens. So I'm going to play a little bit here. Um, I'm going to play combining some of these scales, mixolydian, minor pentatonic, minor blues, which is kind of safe, and then using that whenever I want to add tension. Think of it as a drum fill. The drummer is playing straight, and every once in a while he's going to inject. I like that word, inject, into your playing. He's going to inject into what he's playing uh, some, uh, some fills to add a little bit of excitement, but then he goes back in really quick. So let's give that a try. I'm going to start safe, and then... I don't want to scare people away when they hear this. Right? I really want to draw people in. I want to, don't want to throw at them the weirdest scales. I'm going to do it right here. Very soon. I'm going to turn it around right here. Very short, brief injections of that skip. One more time, just for fun. Okay, the fifth scale is very similar. The only difference is that you're starting with a half step. So if we had the, the diminished scale starting with a whole step, so that's five, seven, eight, and then continue. Well, we're gonna start with five, six, eight, that pattern that we did, the four note pattern. That's what we're starting with. Sounds very similar. I'll alternate both. I'll start with a whole, to, whole um, whole step, half step, whole step, half step. Sounds like something like this. As opposed to... It gives you the same feeling, right? And because these scales are meant to add tension, here's the trick. You could start these scales from wherever. It really doesn't matter. Any, I don't, I'm not even looking. Right? Here, here's the proof. Look, I'm not even looking. It works from anywhere. The most important thing is to have that pattern under your finger and play with confidence, rhythm confidence. Be sure of the um, when you're attacking a note and then be sure to resolve too. Okay, so these scales. The diagrams for these scales is available for free. The link is below. And the backing track that I was playing with is available as well. Now, I don't know when you're watching this video, but the time of release of this video, there's something very special happening on a website, guitarplayback.com. We did that last year and we are redoing this this year for a very limited time. I combined some of my best blues courses with some of my friend Robert uh, Renman's best blues courses as well. That is tons of content available for a very limited time. Again, I don't know when you're watching this video. If you're watching it, you know, a month after release of this video, it's too late. I'm sorry. I will tell you when we do this again. If you're watching this within the first week of release of this video, you need to go to the website below. If it's still available, it will tell you. And if you don't see it, well, it's too late, but go check it out because you're gonna get hours and hours and hours of highly uh, produced, uh, very good quality blues courses, tons of backing tracks, including some stuff like this, some rhythm stuff, some lead stuff, some improvisation tips, all that combined at a price that is so low that I can't tell you that price. You just click the link below, you're gonna save hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars if you do it right now. It's a ridiculous price. Check it out. And if this was your first visit, consider subscribing every week. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is video day. And uh, 
new video kind of like this one is released. So subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Thanks so much for watching this video. Practice well. I'll see you next time.